Oh yeah, I'm back now. So a couple years ago, I made a build on a Pentium system. That system had been a weird project in the making for a long time, but we're sort of back to our roots now, in a bit of a weird way. This, and I'm almost inclined to call it the ultimate DOS machine. Probably not as ultimate as Draga 1's ultimate DOS machine, but it's very similar unintentionally, at least to the original Ultimate DOS machine. So this thing is actually super awesome, and I've been meaning to make a video about this for a long time. I think now is about time I actually get around to making a video about this thing. So you might have seen this thing in the background of some old videos on my other channel, Two Times Friday, but I've never actually given this thing a video of its own yet since the last Pentium build overview video, which this has ties to that system still. But to start off here, we're just gonna do a quick overview of this system here, um, before we get into what's inside. So you can see on the front here we have a creative 52 speed CD-ROM drive with a big old LED there, play and stop buttons. This was a part of the original, um, original, original DOS machine I built before my last Pentium 1 build. Um, and this is actually the same motherboard from that build reinstalled again because the FIC PA-2007 from my last Pentium 1 build really didn't want to play nicely with a lot of DOS stuff because it was just too late for that. It was more of a Windows 95 era board. Even Windows NT or 2000 if you tried hard enough I guess. This system is using the original motherboard from the first build I ever did which it's gonna be weird when I open up the case. The next thing here is our five and a quarter inch um, floppy disk drive with the uh, same size green LED. The name here is Cobalt because of the Cobalt Blue and the Cobalt that was mined by slaves to build this computer um, and other Tesla batteries and stuff. Here's our generic three and a half inch floppy drive. Uh, no fake floppy drive because like that. Um, Power switch. This is not the power switch that was in this case originally. This was another one that I had, which I painted the bezel here, just like I painted these. And I painted the case about two years ago, but um, it has gone a little bit scratched up since then. This case itself is so beat up that it won't even close properly. The system that this was originally had a motherboard in it, which I was using for the DOS build for a while. It was a shuttle hot something, I forget, um, which died due to metal falling on it. But the system was a mess even when I got it. All these LEDs were blown out, but I ripped some LEDs out of another case. I have two of them. So I didn't really need both of them. Our reset button, non-functioning turbo button, and this right here is a toggle switch that enables the second hard disk because um, the power supply is an AT power supply that was in this case originally and I was quite scared that it would die. It's the Minecraft Machine 2, although this is actually the Minecraft Machine um, 2X as I like to call it, because X just means it's more powerful, just like how the more powerful version of the Mac SE is called the Mac SE X. I mean, SE30. Um, here's our sticker, the Intel Inside Pentium 1. Um, I'd always meant to put a case badge here, but I never really got around to doing that. If we take a look at the back, it's a bit weird. Um, now this might start looking familiar if you've seen the original Ultimate DOS machine. This is what I did on the first ever build, although I never made a video about it, so we're pretty much back to our roots now, although I did this in an ATX case originally. I don't have it anymore. This is a switch if you want to turn off the first hard disk for some reason. Uh, this switch here is a small toggle switch that just switches between which hard disk is master and slave, so you can boot off of the second one, which has Windows 95. If you want to boot off the first one, this should be on, that should be down, and this should be up. So the motherboard here is um, from a Packard Bell. You can see the keyboard switch miraculously lines up, although the mouse port doesn't, so that's why we're going to be using a serial mouse, um, which I thankfully have because they're pretty hard to find. A parallel port, non-used VGA port, because 
our VGA is right there. That's the ATI Mach 64 GT video card. This is an Adaptec AHA or AHA 2930 CU SCSI card, which is not actually used right now, but I had previously used it for a quick drive. This is the Sound Blaster 16 value. I forget the model number exactly. And this is a D-Link DE220 PCT ISA network card with BNC and Ethernet connections. And then up here we have the old ass power supply. I'm not really sure why I didn't replace this. It says Oriental Computer on the fan in there. And it's very old. So when I got this beat up old case, which was probably, it could have even been a 386 originally since this power supply is from 1990. Um, it was painted gray um, when I got it. That's why the back is still gray be because that was what the previous owner painted it. So let's just get this open here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the power supply, June 21st, 1991. Um, although nothing can go wrong because it's perfect. Uh, uh -huh. what the fuck? So the C drive says it's good, March 13th, 2005. Our uh, five and a quarter floppy is in there. Um, the power cables are a bit weird and messed up due to my hackery for the hard disk switches. So our first hard disk here which has the original MS-DOS and Windows 3.11 install, is a 4.3 gigabyte Seagate ST3432A hard disk, which is coincidentally the exact same hard disk model used in the original Ultimate DOS machine that failed. So the SSD gods will probably curse me for not having moved this over to a CF card by now. The hard disk was way cooler than the CF card because it makes cool spinny and clicky noises, and that's fun. Yeah, I'm stupid. This, this hard disk down here, which I didn't even screw in, apparently. A Quantum Fireball EX64A, I think. That's probably wrong. Which is unplugged for some reason. Um, there is the heatsink for the Intel Pentium 150 processor. It's our nice blue heat sink. That's not the original heat sink that was on this motherboard. This motherboard is the one that I pulled out of the corpse of the Packard Bell um, Multimedia E140 back in 2018. Um, and this is what I did my first ever DOS machine build with. So it's back because it's actually a surprisingly decent motherboard and crashes less than the last two motherboards that I had in this system. Although it's all held in with wire ties and separated with pieces of wood behind it because it doesn't actually line up with any of the screw holes, obviously, due to being proprietary. This was supposed to be in a flatbed case, so the PCI and ISA slots are now upside down. So to ensure that they don't fall out, the riser card has been wire tied in several places. All the cards are wire tied together and to the riser card. This is for support when plugging in connections. You can see this does move a little bit, but not too much. You can see this little switch here, this cable, and that plugs into the hard disk here to enable the master and slave jumper switches. In case you want that to be the master drive instead of that. And back there, that is 96 megabytes of RAM. You can never have too much. So I'm probably gonna run this video here with the case off, just in case anything goes wrong. I was having some issues with the sound card last time I started this up, so it may have, um, unseated. No, I think it's still okay. Oh, the most important. What is this, a USB port? All right, let's boot it up. I was having some issues with this not receiving enough power before. Seems to work. So 
Boss battery is not dead, thanks to the Sierra 2032 battery. So, sometimes this did have some issues with booting, although it seems to be fine, I think. See, I had to ram out some stuff because I was getting a lot of errors. Um, because the hard disk may or may not be bad. So, do a directory listing here. Um, this is better directory. You can see some of the crap that I have on here. Uh, I'm probably not going to go over too much today, but um, maybe go over some, maybe go over again some of the stuff from the previous video. So, everything on here is currently working now, um, for the most part. Even Windows still work. So um, we can do a little test of our speakers here. So on the old motherboard, Impulse Tracker did not work. But now, okay, wait, there we go. You're not making me fucking look good. There we go. So we do have our speakers right here. So these are all of my um, key gen music um, XM files. There's a little bit more in here. I don't remember. So this is where most of the music for my videos comes from. Just if you're wondering, I like to put the song titles in the descriptions, though I don't always remember to. This is also the music that I used to play back when I used to stream, although I don't really do that anymore. This is my beginning song in each stream. What? Shit. So there were a few other fun things on here. Um, I could not actually get Dosted on to work. Um, Kamira is on Windows 3. I have to show you that later. I forget exactly what ACP is. Oh yeah, it's another CD player thing. Um, DOSMID is on here. I don't mean to just show music, but um, DOSMID did not work on the PA2007 for some reason. <laughs> it's trying, okay. I had an AW64 in here one time, and now this just sounds sad. I forgot this was in here. It's a dead meme, but I have to. Jeez, that does not work on the Sound Blaster 16. Fast Tracker is on here. Um, and again, I have to show off MPX Play, because it is just... Because, yeah, you can play mp3 files on here. This is the Pentium 150. I should mention that. Because out of a lot of that stuff on the old video, like, the only thing that worked was Rad Tracker. And on the motherboard that was in the system when I got it, I was so sad that Rad Tracker didn't work. But on this freaking Packard Bell motherboard, like, everything I've thrown at it has worked. And you guys say Packard Bell's bad. Like...
Reality Check Network forever. So, there were a couple games on here that I showed on the Focus last video. Um, I don't remember exactly how many of these work. Let's try a bit of a pinball. You need five six free. Lemmings has to work. I can't remember if I showed Sky Roads in the last video. Or Christmas Sky Roads. There, this works. But we don't have MIDI. Dang, it's the best part. Jeez. This reminds me a tad of, um, fucking run. I don't really think I'd actually played this on here that much. Oh wait, that blows you up. Okay, fine. Okay, well, my camera stopped recording, but... Do I have a DOS version of Taipei on here? No, of course I don't. I thought I didn't have that. We'll see. Sound works on here now. Jeez, I'm bad. I have wasted so much time that could have been done, spent doing schoolwork at school, playing Tetris, and I'm bad at it. Is music not working again? There we go. It was off. We just need a line piece because I don't have any order with this. Why are the Tetris gods so cruel? To oh, there's a line piece. I will admit that the high score up in the corner is from the last time I played this for a video. I think I'm getting the hang of this again. Oh, no. <laughs> Alright, that's enough, but, um... Am I hedge? <laughs> I don't remember that. Do I want to play Rayman? Fuck, where's my CDs? Okay, I can't find it. So, so that was a bit of fun, but I think that it's about time we enter another realm. The realm of Microsoft Windows for work groups 3.11 that is. Oh. <laughs> Again, at one point I was having issues with this install, but it seems to have um fixed itself. The camera doesn't seem to have fixed itself, though. There we go. Uh, that, I don't know how to fix the errors. It's just a bunch of bullshit. Well, the mouse works. So, there are quite a few things loading in because this is my now heavily modified install of Windows 3.1 that when I posted about this on Reddit, um, some people in the comments said, you dummy, that's not Windows 3.1, that's Windows 95. But that's where you're wrong. Because if you minimize the program manager there, it looks a hell of a lot like Windows 95. But it's not. Because the two biggest mods that I have running on here right now is, um, one is obviously Calmira 2, which is a, the famous Windows 95 like shell for Windows 3.1 and um, a program called Plugin for Windows. Now Calmira 2 you can still download from the official website and uh, Plugin for Windows I got off of Vogons 
um, because you can get the registered version on there. And various other utilities um, were used to change the other appearance, including a utility called Patch Driver or Patch DRV to change the buttons, um, which are part of the graphics driver, apparently. Um, although that part of the hard drive is actually corrupted, so I don't know if I can show you that area. Um, so you can use the file manager here, or you can use the Calmira file manager, which is much more like the Win95 file manager. Um, this is a little system resources thing that shows that I only have 88 megs left on my 2GB FAT16 partition. We're using 15 megs of our 137 megabytes. That must. We should be able to also access our public drive if the network is networking. Okay, so can I ping 182.168.98? Yes, I'm not exactly sure why the public drive is not working. As you can see, this has a really nice um, file manager alternative where you can drag stuff around and copy stuff and much more like Windows 95, um, albeit the X button being over here. So if you want to take a look at this, um, which yes, I prefer having the icons at the top instead of the bottom, the colors I set in the um, Explorer settings, um, the clock and all that from plugin for Windows. I forget which utility I use to change the um, base font of Windows. Plugin for Windows has the icons as well, including the custom mouse cursor. Um, to fix a couple issues, I also have fix one megabyte running, which is supposed to fix the um, memory leak issues in Windows 3.1 and stops Windows from hanging so often. So you can check out a couple of the things that I have on here. So because we have the internet, there are quite a, f there are quite a few incredible futuristic internet features on here, such as Netscape, and I can't run it, such as Internet Explorer. Yes, I know, my brother has been botched to bring me here. So, we should be able to maybe partially load my website, although I don't think it'll... Oh yeah, it's a little messed up now. <laughs> it's been a while. I'm surprised it renders this this well, though. It's actually not terrible. Although, there are a few other websites on AfterSleep that should render a bit better. Let's try White Cat aftersleep.org and obviously Razorback that you saw at the beginning works just fine but um my cat is working fantastic with these spinning pumpkins we should be able to post on with the guest book 2000 HP yes you can post Man's website. I don't know how to pronounce your name. This of course works just fine. Yeah, I just put too much crap on my website for it to actually render properly. But of course, everyone else on After Sleep is talented enough to make a website that actually works properly. Anyways, so not only can you browse with Internet Explorer, you can also chat on MIRC, which I have done from this computer before, which we don't tend to actually chat on IRC that often, um, but our inaugural chats, August 4th, 2022, is archived on the um, After Sleep IRC page. I'd always thought it'd be a fun project to try to make a website on this computer. Um, I think there were some parts of it, but I never actually finished it. But what can you do when there's fun stuff you can do? Yeah, audio station. Um, it looks kind of crap now for some reason, and the CD player doesn't actually work now. I don't really know why, but... I'm not sure if DOSMID is configured wrong or something, because I feel like it sounds a little better in Windows. There we go. That's what it's supposed to sound like. Oh yeah. And there are even a couple little Windows games on here. Um, but I like to call them desktop games because they're like games that they're ba they're kind of like, you know, 
board games. And I also added Windle in here, which is the Windows 3.1 Wordle, which, um, okay, it doesn't show, but I got this from a website called dialup.net, which this is a new thing. Guess Crane. What the hell ends with E? And has A. And doesn't have A in the middle, so it wouldn't be frame. <laughs> Gile? What the hell is this word? This, for, this rem for some reason, this game reminds you of those games that were in top three games for kids. I know no one knows what I'm talking about, but just the way that it looks, because I'm pretty sure this is written in Delphi, if I remember reading the page. I don't actually go to it right now. Okay, it's gone. Okay, well, it is still here. And it says right here, this program was developed in Delphi 1 on a Gateway 486 DX266. Which, you are actually insane for actually doing that. I give up. <laughs> the word was soat. The fuck. Anyways, these are actually quite a lot of fun. I especially appreciate that Windle was created. Obviously, we have the other entertainment pack classics like Solitaire, Ski Free, Tetris, blah blah blah. I really need to make a video about Top 3 Games for Kids someday. Because it's kind of like the disc you saw it a second ago, and it's right here. My grandma had this back when she was on Windows 3.1. And this is the CD that she had. It's... Pretty much a shovelware pile of trash. <laughs> but it had slots games, and that's what my grandma wanted. And I ended up playing these games when I was little. The best one was this game called UZ. I think that's how you pronounce it. And this game's actually kind of fucking awesome, because all the other games on the Millennium Game Pack, like, are kind of trash. And this is the most advanced game on the entire disc, probably because, um, it wasn't made by Bearware, because they stole it. Right now I'm on level 25, but for the longest time I never got past, like, level 8 when I was little. And I still don't even know how many levels this game has. And at some point, I want to make a video with a full playthrough of this game. Live. Not a live stream, but my live reaction. Because I have never... I don't know where this game ends. And I really want to find out someday, because I've had this game for so long. So I can go to a different account, just so I can show you an earlier level. Because, um... So, you can do things like that, and, um, surround things to obliterate them to death. <laughs> there we go. And a lot of levels get a lot more challenging than you think they would, and that's why I never actually finished this game. But you can see how a lot of the other games on here are just, like, freaking wild wizard slots. Fuck this. Holy moly. It's kind of banging. So yeah, they really disrespected Masterworks by putting the masterpiece that is UZ in this pile of trash. But <laughs> but anyways, for now, I think that's going to be about it for this video. So I don't want to rip off the name of the Ultimate DOS Machine, but this kind of is the Ultimate DOS Machine. In that it has everything, and I even got the Windows 3.1 networking networking, which really isn't actually that hard. So... Not everything works, and I lost a couple CDs, but, but I really hope you guys still enjoyed this video. Um, I'm going to try to make a couple more videos 
in the future, not so far apart, I know, but the, the nine month upload gap. But anyways, I will see you guys later, and it's time to shut down Windows. Computers are making a weird noise. It stopped.